Hey everyone, welcome to this summary of Horizon 4's Update 9. Now this update is dropping within 24 to 48 hours of the live stream as they said, so should be here by Thursday at the latest. Now I think the biggest feature that people have been waiting for in this update is the wall riding fix. So let's go ahead and dive right into that to start. Um, this is looking like a great system so far, so to go over some of the mechanics of it, uh, essentially when you hit a wall, your car gets slowed down for a few seconds, and you are given some leeway here, so you won't be penalized for smaller wall taps or being pushed into walls by other cars, which brings us to part two of the major system, which is collision detection. Now, I think this was handled really well too. Basically, if the game detects that two cars are going to collide, it ghosts the faster car, so it looks like ramming and wall riding are going to be at the least vastly mitigated. So uh, the system looks really fair, about as fair as an automated system can be, and it still does allow for some trading paint and defensive driving, which I do think is good and important to keep in online racing. All in all, I think this should remove the overwhelming majority of player griefing. You know, there's probably going to be still a few cases where things get past the system, but I feel like this is about as strong of a system as we can expect, and I'm definitely excited to get back into some online racing uh, and check it out now. So moving on, let's kind of get back into a chronological order of how they went through things on the stream and start by going through the upcoming festival rewards. Uh, for overall festival completion at 50%, you're looking at getting the Final Fantasy Quartz Regalia. I think this is only the second chance people have ever had to get that, so that's nice to see. And then at 80% for the overall series, uh, you're looking at getting the Bone Shaker. Now this is, I think, the third opportunity people have had for getting this car. Um, I'm all for it. I do already have a Bone Shaker, but I know a lot of people don't. And a lot of people want it because uh, it is obviously one of the most popular A-Class cars. Uh, now moving on to Summer, the 50% is going to be the Morris Traveler. Uh, the 80% is going to be the Volkswagen Type 2 Forza Edition. For the Championship, you're looking at the brand new Mini Convertible. And you'll also be getting a red racing suit. For Autumn, the 50% reward is a Maserati MC12 Corsa, and you'll be getting a Peugeot 205 Forza Edition at 80%. The Trial reward is a John Cooper Works Mini, uh, which used to just be a wheel spin exclusive, so nice to see that uh, as a concrete reward now. And then for the Championships, there's actually two rewards for two different Championships. You can get the 94 Nissan Fairlady Z, and the 69 Ford Mustang. And for winter, you're looking at a Mini Countryman at 50% and a Land Rover Series 3 Forza Edition at 80%. The trial reward is a Mini Cooper X-Raid. The championship rewards are a 2018 Mini John Cooper Works Buggy, which is new to the game, and they kind of showed that off a little bit. Uh, and then also a Porsche 914-6. For spring, we're getting the Buick GSX at 50% and the Forza Edition BMW M5 at 80%. And then the trial reward is a very exciting Apollo Intenza. Uh, and the championship rewards are going to give us a Ferrari 599 GTO and a white racing helmet. So you can definitely see there's a clear theme with the festival playlist here. They've gone with uh, a lot of minis, and I think they're kind of starting to figure out the reward system a little more. You can see uh, all the 80% are Forza editions, and then most of the more easy to get cars are from either specific championships or just from the 50% rewards, and I think that's a great way to do it. I hope they kind of continue that trend moving forward. Um, and then moving on to kind of the other only major feature we're getting with this update, uh, custom adventure. This allows us to choose what type of online racing we want to do. So if you want B-class rally with no collisions on and no free roam rush, then you can queue up for that now. Uh, it does have a few limitations and concerns for me though. For one, and I think this was expected, there's no ranked custom adventure. So if you do want to play ranked, you're stuck playing whatever the game gives you. Uh, there's also no custom drift adventure, so we won't be able to do rear wheel drive or all wheel drive only lobbies, uh, which I'm a bit surprised about. I don't know why they didn't add that, and I'm definitely hoping it comes soon. Uh, finally, there's still no D, C, or X class racing, which they did explain was mostly due to the fact that they didn't want to dilute the player base too much. Uh, you know, with the option to pick between 
all of these different classes and race modes, it's going to split up the player base and make queuing for races a lot longer. So we'll see how it plays out. I think if they can maintain uh, a wide variety of healthy lobbies in all these different racing disciplines, then I'm sure we'll end up seeing some more customization added in the future. We're also getting a New Horizon story uh, in Update 9. It is a business, so you'll get passive income from it. Uh, it's called The Car Files, uh, and it has kind of like a car insurance investigator theme to it. Uh, seems like there's some good opportunities uh, for some kind of funny moments there, so I'll definitely be checking that out. And that was pretty much everything for major features. Uh, they ended up having an audio dev on to discuss the process of getting car sounds in game. And I do actually love seeing this type of content on their live streams. It was really cool to get that inside look uh, into audio devs for these games. But I did kind of get the feeling that they did this sort of to defend themselves against the outcry for better car sounds. So although, again, it was seriously really cool in my opinion, uh, I would have liked to see them follow up with addressing the car sounds issue a bit more directly and instead they kind of just finished with a few minor audio fixes. Um, the Agera audio was fixed and I think some of the Hoonigan vehicles had their audio fixed as well. Uh, they ended the stream with a Q&A as they usually do which had a few interesting pieces of info. They did talk about this uh, I think in update 8 live stream, but they are working on new body kits to be coming in the future and they did sort of tease class-based rivals, so uh, definitely not confirmed, but I'll be keeping an eye out on that. They definitely seemed to be teasing that that might be coming soon, maybe with Expansion 2. Uh, and speaking of Expansion 2, there was sadly no talk of it here. It is still confirmed to be coming out the first half of 2019, so as of right now, I think a lot of people are speculating that they'll be dropping a trailer for this at E3 and launching it soon after. So definitely watch E3 if you're looking for info on the elusive second Forza expansion. Uh, personally, I'm really hoping that they're waiting for E3 because there's something of a bigger um, element to this expansion, but uh, not going to let my expectations get too high here. And we'll wrap things up. Overall, I think this update was a little bit light, but definitely another welcome addition to the game. Really happy to jump into online now. And let me know what you all think of it in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video where I'm finally revealing my real life cars. So I'll see you in the real world soon. Bye, everyone.